The Lauer 10mm f2.8 with autofocus is a lens that I did not expect to suit this style of shooting. This is the Golden Gate Bridge over here. A lot of different angles you could shoot this from. Um, yeah. Unique thing with this one is you kind of have to deal with the trees right here. You can kind of see it's right in the middle if you get it just right there. Now vlogging style lenses are typically 16. People use a 1635, 1625 maybe around 20 mils it might be a bit too tight with stabilization but definitely not 10. Bixby bridge right over here just lost the sun but it still looks pretty beautiful and for the best real world example that i can give you this whole little road trip down highway one on the west coast of the states was shot with this exact setup right here the lauer 10 mil f 2.8 with my sony a7c mark ii minivan for the trip this thing's actually got a huge amount of space in it, what it is. For five guys and all our bags, it's pretty good. It drives like a minivan. It's comfy though. But it's like smooth, good on gas, holds all our stuff. Yeah, it's comfy, yeah. It's, I Another mean, seat. it's like it's like the ultimate cruising machine, but it's not like the coolest like looking thing ever. We're old though, we don't care about that. Yeah, we're, we're all, we just want to be comfortable. We're all almost 40, so yeah. we can drive minivan. <laughs> No other lens out there exists like the Lauer 10mm f2.8 because this has autofocus. We've had manual focus versions and variants of this focal length before, but nothing with autofocus. Just pulled over to the side of the road here. We're nearly at the point where you can't go any further because of the landslide. There's some whales out in the ocean. I'm gonna try and shoot them with the 7200 f4 and the teleconverter in crop mode. It's right out here. It's going the other yeah. way. Oh, you can see it now, it's just popped out. Chris has the right idea with the tripod. I'm struggling handheld at 800 millimeters because it's a 70 to 200, two times teleconverter. So that gets me to 400. Then I hit the crop mode. So it's 600, not 800. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah and like, or when, if you can get it to like the full tail out of the water, that's, those are the ones that I really like. This is the setup I've been using for all these anamorphic shots. It's the FX3 with the Atomos Shinobi 2. Okay, yeah. Anamorphic Blazar Rima 65mm T2. I think one of the biggest things that stands out as a reason why this is such a good setup for shooting this style is because that is everything right there. That is all I used and I shot a lot of vertical content, just kind of held it like that. You can also hold it like this. And the horizontal stuff was just shot like this. The stabilization in this camera, the a7C2 here, is fantastic for this style of shooting. With a wide field of view anyway, things look more stable than they really are. It's just one of the illusions of shooting with a wide angle lens. And that's one of the reasons why people shoot wider for vloggy style content is because wider looks smoother, generally speaking. We're just waiting. We're just waiting for sunset at Bixby Bridge and uh, here for a little impromptu photo shoot right by the Pacific Ocean. The other thing with a 10 millimeter is that you just don't have to hold it out very far and it doesn't distort your face or anything. You can like hold it right there and you're not getting any of this arm fatigue because you're having to hold out here. Just hold it right here and it's still a wide enough frame. You know you can eat these? Oh, help. It's like eating seaweed. So Mama's over there with a 7200. I think everyone's rocking 7200s for photos, for portraits. I was. A 40? I was using a 40 mil. Oh. But on the A7CR, you can crop in to crop mode and it becomes a 60 mil and it's still like 26 megapixels. You heard it here first. Hey dad. <laughs> You look so far away. <laughs> Did it. Did it. Nice. He came down here and he's like, shit, that's as far <laughs> as I can go. He did it, you survived. Thank you. You got it. I also find that I didn't really have to think about framing too much because 10 mils is so wide, you can literally just point it without even looking, generally in the direction that you want it to shoot so i want to just shoot this or just shoot me i can just turn it around and i know that some part of me is going to be where it needs to be to capture what it is that i'm looking to capture and that really just takes the pain out of having to like look and be like oh no move a little bit to your left like you don't have to do that you just point it vertically horizontally whatever you want to shoot at 
and you're gonna get it. Did it? I did it. Yeah, buddy. Can Donna do it? Can Donna do it? Wow, he just made it look good. Oh, he did. With the long legs of yours. <laughs> Donna, long legs. Not a bad view. Right? Get top it's that. Pretty fantastic. And here's one of the reasons why this lens stands out compared to some other options out there in the market, which all suffer from this problem, which this one does not. If you like to use or abide by the 180 degree rule, as in you like a little bit of motion blur, even though it's a vlog or a travel video, you want that little bit of motion blur to really keep people in the moment, keep it a little bit more cinematic and real looking. As soon as you add a filter, you see the edges, you see a little bit of vignetting. With this lens, I can take the lens head off. I've got a 77 mil filter on there. I can add a step up ring and this exact filter, which is what I used, the Freewell magnetic one. It's a variable ND. And I have my ND on the front there. I can adjust this to get the right exposure and I don't see it in the frame. All right, we are back for Bixby Bridge, round two. We're here. We actually got a space right by it today. A lot less people as well. We're back for the third time in in two days. We're back. Kind of a different vibe here tonight. Last night we had a lot of mist coming in from the ocean, and we don't have that tonight. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of sunset we get color-wise compared to last night. That means I can just turn this get the exposure I want. I set my ISO to auto, my shutter speed to 1 50th, stick at f2.8, my ISO limits of however high I want it to go are set in camera, that's a setting you can control. And it just becomes this fully automatic vlog machine. All right, so we made it to sand dunes, but we don't want to walk all the way out there because we're a little lazy. So we're gonna do a recon mission, send the drone up and uh, see what's out there. Bye, buddy. Is there a path? Yeah, there's a little path. We just follow that path to the dunes. You see on the lens there, zero D. What that means is zero distortion. Typically when you shoot wider or with wider lenses, the lines start to have a little bit of curvature to them, which is your distortion. One of Lauer's big things is they've made a lot of lenses that have zero distortion. So lines appear straight in the frame. Come down to an area called Morrow Bay. Originally we wanted to take Highway 1 all the way down, but because of that landslide, we've kind of had to go a little bit inland, a little, like a long way inland actually, and take a detour. So now we're here at a recommended spot for some sand dune action and uh, doing a little reconnaissance because we don't really want to walk over there right now and the light's pretty bad. We're going to come back later on. So you get that fisheye look that's like reminiscent of 90s skateboard films but without the fisheye look. Everything is straight, everything looks as it should look, and it looks natural to the eye. Now we have come the other side. That's not a good way to start. <laughs> you don't typically associate wide field of views with having any great depth in the frame. But because this is an f2.8 lens, even at 10 mils, especially when you're closer to things, and you can be close because it has a really small minimum focus distance of 12 centimeters, you are actually seeing a little bit of depth in there. It's a look that you don't typically see. Super wide field of view with a little bit of depth in the frame. It's unusual. We're not used to seeing it, and it stands out as a reason why I think I like using this so much. We've driven down a very boring road now, I avoided the coast because we couldn't go down it, and now we're at Morrow Rock. This place is famous for rock. a rock. That one. What does everyone think of the rock? It's big. It's, uh, it's very marble. On a scale of 1 to 10 rocks? Yeah. It's big. Is it the best rock you've ever seen? I actually haven't seen it yet. Where is it? It's gone. The uh, mist is coming in thick here. Where are you guys headed? I'll say that. Chris goes, Sony Camp, want to come? That's your line. Yeah. Sony Camp. F2.8 obviously means that you can shoot in lower light environments as well without having to push the ISO as high. He's trying to film a bit, pretending that he's going to be breaking into Sony so I'll be laying on the ground condo so because he doesn't shoot Sony and then as I start addressing them Chris then you can pull the window down and I use this Sony mic with it as well and I set this to auto 
right here. I'm leaving hidden messages for Anthony because he left me with yeah. this microphone yeah, and it's recording. So just, just leave. butt soup. You'll be amazed how good, and I should do a whole video on this, how good this mic is in auto. It raises it up when it needs to be. It drops it down when it needs to be. You leave this thing in auto, you never have to worry about setting your levels in camera ever again. The whole vlog that you saw shot in auto. And we weren't sure if we were gonna get any kind of sunset or anything after that, but looks like maybe we might have some luck. Views for days. See any way to get down? Uh, jump. Okay. I brought my parachute. Yeah. Three, two, one. See, yeah. how do you pick for this? Because you either have an overexposed beach, yeah. or you can underexpose it, and then you get the reflection. Of it's a, it's a tough choice. Yeah, oh, sorry. It's kind of a good spot. Oh, you didn't have to wait. The frame, I realized you were filming. Oh, thank you. dunes different day no sun today it's very uh misty hazy low cloud ceiling whatever you want to call it more rock we left couldn't even see the rock again so now we're going to try and see what these dunes are like we've got a tip that we have to walk through a trailer park to uh get to them so we'll see that looks like a route to me i'm simultaneously walking forwards and backwards at the same time <laughs> whose idea was this don't worry, we'll call the sand ones. <laughs> <laughs> that won't get old. Oh, there's so much. Wow. Just building a beach over here. It's so tight. Ah. Oh, I think there's more in this one. Whew. Oh, it's just a, everywhere. It's a good job. We're literally going to Kando now. Kando? Kando. And uh, free cleanings. So uh, I'm just going to give him my bag and good luck. The combination of just 10 mils, everything being super wide, it's an interesting look. Seeing everything that's going on in the background, not having to worry about seeing the vignetting from the filter, the fact that it's autofocus and you just point it at whatever you want without really having to worry about the frame. That is what I think makes this lens, the Lauer 10mm f2.8 with autofocus for Sony email, potentially an excellent choice, if not the perfect choice for vlogging if you want a really wide field of view. That's that. I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm. Take care. Sony stepped it up or not? Too much of a Sammy boys. <laughs> <laughs> Sinner. 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 I 